you may be wrong about Tesla's stock valuation, and here's why. Tesla bulls are notorious for their excessive valuations. Ron Barron, a famous Tesla bull, has predicted that the firm will achieve a 3 to 5 return in 10 years. Kathy Wood's 5-year forecast is $3,000, implying a market size of $3 trillion. Skeptics, on the other hand, are on the polar end. Citigroup Incorporated has an underweight rating on the company, but boosted its price target to $313 on January 27th. JP Morgan Chase & Co. both have price estimates on more than 70% decline stock. Want to know why everybody is wrong about Tesla's stock valuation? Keep watching to find out. To start, we'll make a case for the bearish outlook. In the first quarter of the year, Tesla produced 305,000 vehicles and delivered 310,000, resulting in an annual manufacturing pace of approximately 1.2 million automobiles. Model S-X manufacturing and deliveries have plunged to near-zero levels, with lease accounting for 17% of new vehicles. The company's new Roadster may have aided in the revival of this business segment, but there's no indication that it will be released anytime soon. The company's automobile business, in our opinion, is divided into four divisions. The first category includes low-cost vehicles, Model 3 and Model Y. Second are the high-end Ferrari-like vehicles, Roadster. The third category comprises mid-high-end vehicles, Model S and X. The fourth area of focus is self-driving cars and the company's work in this area. The firm made a big deal about the upcoming Roadster. However, the deadline has been repeatedly pushed back, and the most recent estimate is 2023. It's still unclear whether it will truly happen in 2023. The company's Model S and X come next. Those models, in our opinion, are what made Tesla what it is today. However, the company hasn't had a great performance in a long time, and sales are only a small percentage of the business. As a result, the company's annualized revenue is only a few billion dollars. Then there are self-driving cars. At the moment, this is still undecided. Sure, FSD beta exists, but the company keeps postponing that. Musk has promised that it would be released this year, but we don't know. Hence, the timeline is mostly unpredictable. Tesla has repeatedly pushed back its complete self-driving date, enraging customers who had paid a premium for the service and expected it sooner. Again, we're not implying that Tesla won't prevail. However, a good case study would be Waymo, whose valuation has dropped from $200 billion to $30 billion. Finally, we'll take a look at the Model 3 and Model Y. These low-cost models are now available. The business expects to produce more than 2 million automobiles per year by 2022 mainly from these vehicles. We see Tesla moving closer to becoming a mass market manufacturer with more competition. As the global leader in reliable, low-cost vehicles, Toyota is a viable metric here. With 10 million yearly vehicle sales and a market worth of $280 billion, it's worth noting that even with a 50% yearly growth rate, there's a big difference between 2 million and 10 million vehicles per year. Let's ignore the bullish thesis timescale and look at what it would take for the company to reach a $5 trillion valuation. For a corporation to reach a long-term valuation of $5 trillion, its free cash flow must exceed a certain threshold. It may not be when the company reaches the valuation, but it must have a path to get there. We won't account for inflation since we assume investors don't desire a company with a 5x market valuation just because inflation will reduce the dollar's value to 1 to 5 of its current value. The most liberal estimate is $5,000 profit per vehicle delivered, multiplied by 5 million yearly vehicle sales. Assuming the company accomplishes it, that's a total of $25 billion in free cash flow. At our 8% yield, we're allocating $300 billion to the self-driving business, or 10 times the percent valuation of Waymo. Another business is energy storage. The company currently has a 7% market share, and we'll give it the benefit of the doubt that it can triple that to nearly 20% in the future years and decades. Some could argue that it's too low, given the company's success, but this is an industry that's never had a substantial moat. We'll also give a 20% margin, assuming $150 per kilowatt hour by 2030. This equates to $6 billion in FCF and $30 billion in capital expenditures. We are now looking at EVs like the Roadster and even the Model S and X in the high-end automobile market. 
We believe the best method to appraise this company is to compare it to its peers' earnings. A high-end luxury business may be valued as much as Mercedes-Benz and BMW combined, or around $30 billion in free cash flow. Investors that are optimistic about Tesla continue to predict market-beating gains. Despite the company's valuation crossing the $1 trillion mark, this is the case. Despite the potential of other firms such as Apple to continue growing from this point, we believe Tesla may struggle due to its lack of significant free cash flow and path to shareholder returns. On the other hand, let's look from a different perspective. Many consider Tesla an expensive stock, but as gas costs continue to increase, public opinion appears to be shifting. Tesla's sales have already begun to skyrocket, and we believe this might just be the beginning. With Russia, the world's largest producer of crude oil, the key ingredient in gasoline, at war, gas prices are likely to remain high for far longer than previously predicted. Furthermore, it's almost inevitable that many countries will reduce their reliance on Russia for energy. If this occurs, gas prices will inevitably climb as other providers try to keep up with the unexpected increase in demand. Tesla automobiles are, of course, expensive. Gas prices, on the other hand, pile up over time. For individuals who live in rural areas of the United States, where cars are nearly a necessity, gas prices can be even more of a burden. Without a drop in petrol prices, consumers may find Tesla automobiles more cost-effective in the long run. Tesla was one of the first companies to take electric vehicles seriously, giving it an advantage over its competitors. Tesla has essentially controlled the electric vehicle sector with no major challenge from its main competitors. Tesla also offers some of the most advanced self-driving technologies and one of the lowest maintenance expenses of any car. They're effectively doing what Apple did to phones to EVs, charging a premium for user friendliness. In the long run, Tesla's competitors will surely catch up. However, Tesla will continue to capture a major part of EV sales given its popularity. Tesla isn't just an electric vehicle manufacturer. It makes a variety of revenue-generating energy products, such as solar roofs and storage or charging systems. This places them front and center from several angles, and they'll surely benefit from the world's shift to renewable energy sources. In conclusion, I feel that Tesla will be there for a long time. Even if Tesla stays in the lead and the world does adapt to renewable energy, in the future, market sentiment might not support the high numbers Tesla is known to reach regularly. It's still important to realize that the market is quite volatile. If the current global scenario results in a recession, Tesla will undoubtedly fall along with the rest of the market. Gas prices can be dragged down by a recession, as they were in 2008 and 2020. From a traditional standpoint, Tesla is still overvalued. However, the stock is more than just its earnings and market capitalization. Although Tesla has been fundamentally overvalued for nearly a decade, it has continued to rise. In a nutshell, traditional measurements appear to be ineffective for Tesla. Furthermore, Tesla's revenue growth has been excellent, and the company is slowly closing the gap between its market cap and revenue. While this is true, every positive evaluation depends on what Tesla will achieve in the future. Musk and his company are known for making outlandish promises and not fulfilling them. What happens if the company doesn't meet up to its goals? What happens if the macroeconomic climate is suddenly unfit for Tesla? However, we are pro-Tesla on this channel. Tesla has been rapidly expanding, and in a world where governments are transitioning towards renewable energy, it's not unreasonable to expect Tesla to rise in value. Are you bullish or bearish on Tesla? Comment down below.